Hey, what's going on, fam? So this is going to be part two to my part one of the our ADOS and FBA Russian disinformation campaigns. The reason why I want to make this part two is for a couple of reasons. Um, number one is that article had us all over the place, um, meaning that even as I was going through that article and debunking it, it was so full of lies and so full of propaganda at every word or every other word that I had to stop a lot and break down a lot. And because I had to stop and break down a lot, I kind of felt like I was all over the place. And on a side note, that's kind of why I had to make that constructive discourse only video is because just like in this article, when people are trolling and they're writing, you know, a six paragraph response that's full of BS and non sequiturs, it's so full of lies that if you only address one lie, it seems like you're avoiding all the other lies. If you just say it's all a lie, then it it kind of seems like you don't really have anything to say against any of it. So you're just hurrying up and saying it's a lie and then you don't really even support what you're saying. So it's frustrating to even deal with that trap. Like if I try to engage this in any way, either I have to go... And engage every single lie and off track point you make or I can't address it because any other addressing of it will make it look like I'm not really responding to what you're saying. So it's a trap. It's either you respond fully or you don't respond to it at all, which is why I just because I don't have the time and the energy, I just delete and block, you know, people off my channel, which is what I forewarned I was going to do in that video. That was the purpose of that video was to forewarn people of that. But with these articles, obviously, it's not a comment on my YouTube channel, so I can't just delete and block BuzzFeed, unfortunately. I, I wish I could, but I can't just delete and block BuzzFeed. Even if I ignore them, other people are paying attention. So, because I had to stop and, and, and debunk so much, I kind of felt like it felt gave me the vibe of being all over the place, even though I felt like I had a, a consistent mind frame and a consistent point that I was trying to get off. I can understand how it, how the article can kind of feel like or the, the video can kind of feel like it's all over the place because the article is all over the place with so much propaganda and lies and even just single words that are set up for our setups for future propaganda. So anyway, um, that's one of the main reasons why I want to redo this video or the main reason why I want to do this redo this video or do a part two. I'm not even redoing it. I keep saying redo um, do a part two. Is just to, you know, highlight some things that I felt like may have gotten lost in the shuffle and possibly just say, say some things that I may not have said in the first video that I want to kind of get out here now um, and just clarify some things and reemphasize some things. So that's the, uh, the point of this video. So anyway, let's just get into it without further ado. Um, so the one of the main things I want to reemphasize or re-highlight is that this Russia bot campaign has been in the works and will continue to, to, to be pushed. These white supremacists, as I said, they've been working on it since 2016. They are going to continue to push this lie. They are going to continue to push this rhetoric about um, Russian bots and disinformation because this is the, this is the campaign that they, have, that they feel like they can jump on that will get black people back into voting for Democrats and also set up the stage to target those of us who they can't get back to voting for Democrats as black identity extremists and all of this other sort of stuff that they want to set up. So this is the, this is the campaign. And the other thing I want to say too, is in my last video, I kind of said like it was some, I had mentioned this before in some video between, um, my Pan-Africanism versus ADOS video and my Democrats impeachment hysteria video. But the two videos in particular. Or even the one video in particular. That I really talked about this before. Was the. Um, uh, McCarthyism 2.0 video. I really got, got into some of this. In that video. But then I even got into some of it. With the, the impeachment hysteria video. Or, or the impeachment hysteria. Should be offensive to black society video. Um, so those are the two main videos. That you should listen to. But there are other videos that I kind of mentioned the Russian bot stuff before. Only reason why I didn't really make a full video 
um, make a full video addressing the Russian bot thing is because when it, when it first came out or when I first wanted to make a video about it back when Digital Sister, uh, who's in this article, Shireen Mitchell, got on or in that BuzzFeed article that I put that I posted or that I made a video about and posted. Um, I wanted to make a, a video about that Russian bot propaganda back then when Shireen Mitchell got on Joy Reid's show the first time around, not the one that she, not her most recent appearance, but her first time around appearance. Um, I wanted to make a video back then, but there were so many other things happening. Plus, I was dealing with so much BS from the Pan-Africanists that I just got distracted off of it. And I kind of and then it kind of went away. So I let it go. And I was like, oh, I guess it's not that important because they're not really pushing that anymore. They're taking they're taking a we're Republicans approach now. So I kind of left it alone. But um, just know that I've been aware of this propaganda for a long time. And I've been conscious of it since the day they started it which was back in 2016. So even though I haven't been talking about it since 2016, I've been aware of it since 2016. Um, and I just want to point out that this is their campaign. This is it for them. I can see it now for sure. This is what they're going to, this is the horse they're going to ride to, to whip black people back into the Democratic Party and to put the rest of us into a, a black identity extremist box. Is this Russian disinformation, Russian agent McCarthyism talk? All right. Um, so that's that's one of the key highlights. The other key highlight I wanted to point out was I know um, or noticed that I didn't really talk about Joy Reid's segment today, even though I used a, a screen cap or, a, a, you know, the screen cap for my video was a, a screenshot from her show, a graphic from her show. The reason why I didn't talk about it was. Because everything that they said in that segment was pretty much said in the BuzzFeed article. So I didn't want to have to readdress the same thing twice. The reason why I chose the BuzzFeed article over Joy Reid's segment is because I had specific requests from from a well from one subscriber who specifically requested that I break down the BuzzFeed article. Um, and even though because the Joy Reid segment came out like today... When I'm the same day I'm making this video, I know most people wouldn't have had a chance to request me to break down the segment. But to me, there's no point in breaking down the segment, especially since I'm already going to break down the article because I'm going to honor my I was going to honor my brother's request, especially since he was a, a loyal subscriber. And I appreciate the support. I appreciate the support of all my viewers. Um, and and but just because I appreciate the support doesn't mean I'm going to honor every video request. Um, but every now and then I, I will honor a video request because I want to respect my followers and, sh and show them the same respect that they've shown my channel. Um, so that's really the main reason why I chose the BuzzFeed article over the Joy Reid segment. But also there's really no point in addressing the, jo the Joy Reid segment because I would just be saying the same things that I was saying in addressing the BuzzFeed article because it's the same propaganda, it's the same lies. So that's another thing I wanted to, to, to point out and highlight. But let's get into some other things too here. Um, so... One thing I wanted to point out, too, is this at the end of the article that I really didn't point out was how they're saying, oh, we're angry and we just listen to other black people who are angry. So basically, they're saying that black people are dumb sheep and that we're just listening to other people who are angry. And because they're angry, we get angry. And that's how we become susceptible to the Russian bot propaganda. This is more white supremacy. I know you are. But what am I? What am I saying? Because unfortunately, and I don't have too much ego to say this. Um, for the most part, unfortunately, black people are dumb sheep. That's how we're voting for Democrats at the rates we do and at the majorities that we do vote for Democrats. The problem is, is that no black agenda, no vote people are convincing more and more black people that they should no longer be dumb sheep and support the Democrats for no reason. So the Democrats are doing it. I know you are, but what am I by saying, hey. We're trying to convince black people to be dumb sheep. And the way we're going to do it is by telling them they're being dumb sheep whenever they're not being dumb sheep. So if you're not following the Democratic Party blindly, that's you being a dumb sheep, not you actually thinking for yourself and not following the Democratic Party. And that's what they stuck in there at the end of the article. And again, this is why I said what I just said. They stick in so many little things. So that's just one single sentence. 
But that one single sentence has a whole bunch of subliminal messaging behind it. And that article is full of that. And that's what propaganda is. Sublim- sometimes overt, but a lot of times subliminal messaging. And things that are communicated into you in ways that without directly saying these things. So what they're trying to do again is tell black people that you're being a dumb sheep by not being a dumb sheep. So if you listen to this black person, that's you, this other black person who's telling you to think about who you're voting for and what they do for you before you actually cast your vote for them. That's you being a dumb sheep if you listen to that black person. It's not being a dumb sheep. It's free thinking or it's independent thinking if you just continue to vote Democrat no matter what. That's another point that I wanted to point out that I glossed over, but I thought was important to point out in this part two summary or whatever you want to call it. Oh, and then two, um, another thing about the, before I get off the, I know you are, but what am I talking, just understand this is a typical tactic of white supremacists. What do I mean? Whenever a black person talks about racism, they say you're the racist. So talking about racism Talking about racist, talking about how racists should be punished, whatever. That makes you a racist. Talking about white supremacy, that makes you a racist. Talking about the racist makes you a racist. Again, the white supremacists, they do this over and over and over and over again. It's a a time-old, tired tactic. It's just like when I said when the white supremacists are doing divisive things like practicing white supremacy... But if you talk about the divisive things that they're doing, like practicing white supremacy, which is extremely divisive, it's the it's probably the most divisive thing on the planet being a white supremacist. But if you speak out against white supremacy, that makes you divisive, you're dividing people, you're dividing the country. The white supremacists love that. Divide, divide, divide. Talk. That's why the Republican white supremacists, even though Obama was a puppet of white supremacy, they come out and say, oh, Obama was dividing the country. Dividing what? Dividing who? Al Sharpton divides people. Race pimp this, race pimp that. Even though, and again, I don't want to get too much off topic because these people are obviously uh, puppets of white supremacy, of the liberal white supremacists. But again, that shows how some of the less intelligent white supremacists, some of the less sophisticated white supremacists, who are usually the ones who tend to more so support the Republican Party. How they do that, I know you are, but what am I in all aspects of life? Even if the person is not really speaking out against white supremacy. Just the fact that you have that imagery of white supremacy ending, which is what Obama was. He wasn't white supremacy ending. But he was the image that white supremacy maybe could end. Possibly. And that triggered them. And that's why they say, oh, this is division. Anything that ends white supremacy is division. Anybody who speaks out against white supremacy, they're the real racist. All of this babble and talk. That's, that's, this is another variation of the same old thing. And again, this points out to me or further shows me how it's white supremacists who are behind all the black people in this article. They're pulling the string of the strings of all these puppets in the article. But anyway, let's not um, stay on that topic too long because I don't want this video to end up being as long as the last video, even though it might be close. So be prepared just in case it ends up being as long. Um, but anyway, let's move on to the next point. And this is one of the biggest points I want to make in this whole video, in this whole part two. And that's that no black agenda, no vote has been vindicated has been vindicated by this article. What do I mean? This article goes out of its way to mention three times. Now, to be fair, on the last video, I kind of over-exaggerated and I said four, but, you know, I was just in the heat of the moment, the passion of whatever, and making that video, so I was just kind of going, and I kind of over-exaggerated. I didn't exactly count, so I just said four times, but it was actually three times, now that I've counted it. It was actually three times that that article mentions no black agenda, no vote people. It does not once mention Operation Down Ballot people or those who believe in Operation Down Ballot. 
And even though it does not mention or given that it does not mention no operation down ballot people, to me, this vindicates the, the no black agenda, no vote movement in the fact that ADOS figureheads, ADOS founders have been going around saying that no black agenda, no vote will communicate to the powers that be and the white supremacists that you are lazy if you choose the no black agenda, no vote strategy over the operation down ballot strategy. They have been telling the lie that we w- that we will communicate the message that we are lazy. How have they been telling that lie? How does this vindicate us of that lie? Because of the fact that they have to mention no black agenda, no vote three times in an article about disinformation tells you that they are trying to push the message that the quote unquote disinformation, which is not disinformation, is simply telling you the truth about your vote, the value of your vote, and the truth about the liberal white supremacists that most black people continue to vote for. That's all it's doing. But they're, the white supremacists are calling the disinformation, which is, again, more I know you are, but what am I? Because they are the ones putting out disinformation, yet telling us that it's us that are putting out disinformation, or telling us that it is us who are agents of disinformation, when they are the ones putting out disinformation and lies. Their disinformation... They're claiming that we have disinformation is them putting out disinformation. It's just more, I know you are, but what am I, talk. But that aside, in an article about disinformation, they are directly connecting that to not voting. Not voting down ballot, they are connecting that to not voting. They are not connecting that to voting down ballot. So if they are connecting no black agenda, no vote, to this disinformation that tells you that they are not believing that no black agenda, no vote, which has already been attempted during 2016, which was already put in place for the 2016 election, which was already done during the 2016 election. I was already saying no black agenda, no vote in 2016. There were other peoples, particularly quote unquote FBAs, people who were more so Tariq Nasheed followers, who were already promoting no black agenda, no vote. Go back and listen to Tariq's videos. He was having to debate with people about what do we have to lose by not voting. So he had been saying this well before the ADOS thing picked up, like it is now. That's who they were talking about. Because, again, in this article, they mention 2016 over and over and over as an example of what they allege is coming in 2020. They are not talking about Operation Down Ballot people. They are specifically mentioning no black agenda, no vote people. And they are linking that to this alleged disinformation, which means that they are saying that black people did not vote because of, quote unquote, disinformation not because they're lazy so we are vindicated that this article even though it wasn't its intent to disprove antonio moore and yvette carnell's down ballot talk that wasn't this article's intent at all obviously that wasn't the goal of it at all that's what it does that's what it does because it shows that they're they are not thinking because if they thought black people were just lazy They either A, wouldn't write this article at all, or B, they will write an article about black people being lazy and disengaged just because they don't feel like going to the polls and how that's a bad thing and how they need to get out and and go to the polls to make sure that Trump doesn't win and they don't need to let their apathy and and the fact that they don't feel like going to the polls um, allow them to, 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 to... end up letting Trump win by not showing up to the polls. That's what the article would be saying. Instead of saying, hey, this information is what's causing you to not vote, and therefore it's end up, it ends up accomplishing the goal of the disinformation because it makes Trump win, because that's what their whole article is crying about, right? Is making Trump win, or helping the Republicans to win, and not blindly supporting the Democrats. Why aren't they talking about laziness in this article, and how you shouldn't allow that 
to make you not vote and let Trump win instead of saying this information is making you not vote and therefore allowing Trump to win. They are not saying that. They are not saying the laziness is going to lead to Trump winning. They are saying the disinformation. So this article totally debunks Yvette Carnell's we're going to look lazy talk. And just to further emphasize what I'm saying on this point, because I really, really want to drive this home for the trolls and the ADOS and or the ADOS Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore trolls. I'm going to reread the three times that they mention no black agenda, no vote people in this article. Just so there's no debate. So let's go back. Here we go. Oh no, I got the wrong article in front of me now. So here we go. Sorry, I had the wrong article in front of me now. If this article will load. All right, so here we go. Sorry, my bad, fam. Um, so anyway, let, let's read the article, uh, the, the three parts in the article one more time. So this is from the second paragraph. I'm just going to read a part of it. I'm just going to read a part of each article, uh, of each paragraph that the uh, that the that they mentioned, no black agenda, no vote. Just to emphasize this this point before I move on from it. Democratic National Committee sources told BuzzFeed News the party is tracking a new set of loosely organized and the loosely organized. That's another propaganda shot at, at black people. But again, this is why the last video was so long, because I have to stop and debunk so much propaganda. Every sentence, every word is propaganda. And that's how sophisticated white supremacy is. They, they, they make sure every single word they use has a propaganda intent. But anyway, I digress. Let, let's not get off track too much. Democratic National Committee sources told BuzzFeed News the party is tracking a, a new set of loosely organized propaganda, but loosely organized, okay, o online movements that officials believe are trying to steer black voters away from the party or from voting altogether. Now, even though some people may try to say the away from the party part of that Antone are also steering black people away from the Democrats, I wouldn't know that by the Democratic down ballot talk. I wouldn't know that by the fact that you're sacrificing your leverage by going after allies to make sure it's known that you don't support Trump. But that's up for debate. Fine. You can you can even though I may have to make another video further going in on how um, Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore are not steering people away from the Democrats, even if some people may try to claim that in order to defend of that Antonio and, and Antonio from what I'm about to say. Fine. We'll, we'll say just for now, just for now, that Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore trying to steer black people away from the Democrats is up for debate. But you know what's not up for debate? What's next? Let's see here. This is what's not up for debate. They're trying to steer black voters away from the party or from voting altogether. Who's not going to vote altogether? No black agenda, no vote people. Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore have vehemently come out against no black agenda, no vote in favor of Operation Down Ballot. So who are they talking about when they say from vote? Even if you want to dispute who they're talking about in the part where they say away from the party. Which I don't think is up for dispute. I think there they're also only talking about no black agenda, no vote people. But even if you want to dispute whether or not they're talking about no black agenda, no vote people, or Yvette Carnell and, and Antonio Moore's Operation Down Ballot people, even if you want to dispute that, you cannot dispute the from voting altogether part. So that's one time that they mention the not voting altogether and link it to the disinformation in this article. To the alleged disinformation they're talking about in this article. Let's read another time that they talk about. The, th the second time. And one second while I find it. Okay, so this part. Bob Lord, the DNC's chief security officer who was brought on to strengthen the party's cybersecurity infrastructure after the DNC was at, decried the inauthentic behavior of bad actors who aim to mislead 
black voters and dissuade them from participating. It does not say dissuade them from voting top ballot. It does not say um, dissuade them from down, dis- dissuade them from from full ballot or whatever the hell you want to say as a counter to, to Operation Down Ballot. They are saying dissuade them from participating. Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore have told us over and over that the whole purpose of the Operation Down Ballot is to make sure you keep participating in the process. So there is no way that they can be talking about the Operation Down Ballot people here. There is no way. They must be talking about no black agenda, no vote. And don't tell me that they're not talking about... And no, Let me not... I'm going to make that point. And the point I was just about to make, but that I just stopped myself from making, I'm going to make that point later. So, um, let, let's continue with another point. So, here we go. Uh, let me see here. Oh, well, let me not make another point. Let me continue with the same point that I had last time. So, dissuade them from participating. Again, they are not talking about down ballot people. But let's continue with the video. The Senate Intelligence... Well, no, no, blah, blah, blah. Sorry. I'm just, I was about to just start reading the article all over again, which I know y'all can't deal with. I wouldn't want to deal with it either. But anyway, let's continue. So let's read the last part where they say... where they directly address no black agenda no vote folks the dnc has grown accustomed to a black electorate that saw not voting as unfathomable and and unfathomable and has to adjust to a new generation that doesn't think it should vote for democrats just because prior generations did the dnc has grown accustomed to a black electorate that saw not voting as unfathomable and I, i don't know why i'm having a little bit of trouble with unfathomable but um let me emphasize something here. They did not say a black electorate that saw voting down ballot as unfathomable. It did not say a black electorate that saw writing in candidates or writing, doing a write in ballot, which is what writing in ADOS is. It did not say uh, the DNC has grown accustomed to a black electorate that saw write in voting as unfathomable. It does not say a black electorate that saw down ballot as unfathomable. It says, that saw not voting as unfathomable. Not voting as unfathomable. The DNC, what has the DNC, the Democrats, grown accustomed to? Which is why they're making this whole article about how we're a big threat. That saw not voting as unfathomable. They did not say voting down ballot as unfathomable or voting um, right, voting right in ballot is unfathomable. Hell, they didn't even say, even though they're pushing all this propaganda about Republicans and trying to low key lump us in with Republicans, they didn't even say voting for Trump or voting for Republicans as unfathomable. They said not voting and nothing else. Not voting for Trump, not voting for Republicans, not voting down ballot, not none of this other stuff that's mentioned around. The no black agenda, no vote movement. It does not mention none of that stuff. It only mentions one thing. And that is not voting. And that's the third time um, in that article that they mentioned that. But I just wanted to point out, point out and emphasize that last point too. Is how the article continuously, continuously attacks no black agenda, no vote people in particular. Not Operation Down Ballot people. So it vindicates us in that it shows that the message that they got from No Black Agenda, No Vote, which has already been implemented, is not that we were lazy, but that we were, quote unquote, influenced by disinformation. But we know it's not that we were influenced by disinformation. It's that we were influenced by true information. And that's why we stayed away from the polls. 
because we are losing faith in the system, which is what I said the point of no black agenda, no voting. is to give the message that we are losing faith in their system. Which the message was communicated loud and clear. And that's why they're coming out with this counter propaganda to try to debunk or diminish or whatever you want to call it. The information that we put out by calling it disinformation. And that leads me straight into my next point. And that's that even if you want to disagree with me when I'm saying in this part and in part one that this video is not or that this article is not talking about a vet and tone as much as they are talking about the FBA no black agenda strain of this movement. Even if you want to say that they are talking about a vet and tone also. And even if you want to say, well, hey, this is more reason why we shouldn't be no black agenda, no vote, because they're going to use this against us. This goes back to me saying that Yvette and Tone don't understand white supremacy to the level they should to leave a, lead a movement such as ADOS, which is an anti-white supremacy movement. Whether the founders or figureheads of that movement say it's an anti-white supremacy movement or not, that's what it is. And I've already broken that down in other videos. I'm not here to get into that debate. But that's what it is. And they are not they don't understand white supremacy enough to lead an anti white supremacy movement. And this is another example of what I mean, because even if you believe that they are lumping in a vet and tone in the ADOS followers with the FBA followers, which they kind of are, but then they're kind of not, which is why I was pointing out those points. But even if you disagree with me and you agree and you feel that they are fully lumping in the no black agenda, no vote people with the ADOS people. This proves that you cannot worry about what people think about you. You cannot worry about what your opponents say about you. Because they are going to say these things no matter what you say. You can jump out the window on your allies about Trump all you want. If you believe that they are still lumping in a vet in tone with the FBAs and the No Black Agenda people. They're still going to lump you in and say that you're... A low-key pro-Trump movement that's a Russian bot disinformation movement. A low-key pro-Trump Russian bot disinformation movement. So you can come out and make it clear all day that you and your followers are never going to support Trump. And you can jump out the window on your allies because you ain't supporting Trump. They don't give a damn. And don't tell me they don't know about the Tariq Nasheed and, and Yvette Carnell split and the FBA ADOS split. Because they mention... FBA as a rival to ADOS when just a few weeks ago those terms were interchangeable and, and Tariq Nasheed and Yvette Carnell were allies. A rival is the opposite of an ally, basically. This article, this, this BuzzFeed article that I talked about in part one and am re-talking about in part two specifically calls FBA a rival organization to ADOS, which means they know about the split and they know about the division, yet they still. So even if you want to say this is why we can't be no black agenda, no vote is because they're going to lump, they're going to, they, they, they're going to use this to say we disinformation Russian bots. Dude, they lumped you in anyway, even though they saw you split off from Tariq Nasheed. Even though they saw you split off from Tariq Nasheed, they still lumped you in. As a pro-Trump Russian disinformation movement. You can run up, run around and talk about no ballot, uh, down ballot all you want. They still lumped you in despite knowing about the FBA ADO split. They still lumped you in with the no black agenda, no vote people. If they are talking about you also. If they are, which I'm saying they're not. But if the people who want to defend Yvette and Tone against my point want to say that they are actually lumping in Yvette and Tone and I'm just finding ways to not acknowledge that. It also proves how pointless your efforts to not be lumped in with so-called Trump supporting type people like Tariq or people who appear to support Trump like Tariq. And, and all the down ballot effort you're doing to keep them from thinking that you're not lazy. They don't give a damn. They still lumping you in with no black agenda, no vote. But again, I've already shown how this article vindicates us from the lazy talk and the lazy lie. Because that's what it is. It's a lie. But when you don't understand white supremacy, 
you become overly concerned with about what other people think and what other people going to say and all of this stupid stuff. When they going to find a way to say it, no matter what you say, you can run around in circles, hollering down ballot all day, every day. They still going to say you not voting. You can run around talking about how you're not going to support Trump and how you're going to jump out the window on people who do support Trump. They still going to say you support Trump anyway because they don't have an intention for truth. They have a malicious act. And again, the way um, Yvette Carnell and Antonio Moore give these kinds of people passes sometimes and say people just don't understand and all of this stupid stuff and how we got to educate people. It just shows how they don't understand white supremacy. I remember when... Um, when uh like i said well first of all with the new york times article uh antonio moore low-key cape for the woman saying oh they got to it they got to it in the editing room and sliced it up or i remember when this russian bot first stuff stuff first came out both of that and tone's constant approach was they don't understand they don't understand they don't have the education blah 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 no no they understand they were sent out maliciously by white supremacists this is anti this is anti-ADOS, white supremacist propaganda, but Yvette Carnell and Antonio more routinely give these people passes and try to say that they just don't understand, they just don't have the education, they don't have the data, they don't have the degree in political science or law. No, it's none of that. These are malicious actors who are going to say whatever the hell they want to say about you, no matter what you do. Which is why you just got to stand on your square and keep it pushing. But anyway, let's continue with the video. Let's move on to some other points. Or really the last point I want to make. So. The last point I want to make is how they keep glossing over the the, the legitimacy of our concerns. So, for example, in that article, what I want to point out is, for example, with the Tlaib Kweli stuff. Let me read a, a part about Tlaib Kweli. A part of this article that meant that is interviewing Tlaib Kweli. And hold on while I find it. Uh, hold on, fam. I'm, I'm looking for it. One second. Okay, here it is. Rapper and activist Salib Kuli, who has been an ardent critic of ADOS and Blexit and clashed at times with their leaders over the course of the past year, said he applauded the DNC's recognition of their threat. Well, I, that's not even the part I wanted to read, so my bad, fam. Um, but now that I did read that part of the article, notice how they're saying the DNC's recognition of their threat all of this is about supporting democrats so with all this being about supporting democrats why would we continue to support democrats or even get give up our leverage in indicating that we're not going to support trump no matter what and going around going out of our way to prove to people that we're not trump supporters by jumping out the window on allies and talking about how we're not going to support trump and how trump is worse than the democrats when all of this propaganda about us is in support of the Democrats, not the Republicans. But anyway, let's let's move on to the, the part that I actually wanted to read about it. Read um, from Tlaib Kweli. So one second. Um, my parents came from a generation where black people voted Democrat. And my, ge- and my generation was sort of the first to be like, hold on. Why are we automatically giving these people our power? Again, I, I mentioned this in the last article, but I want to reemphasize it. All throughout this article, they do things like this, where they have their blackface tokens, acknowledge our concerns, which is what I was talking about, what they do in the last article. But what I didn't point out is that they're doing it in this article. I talked about how they use black tokens to speak for us or give us the feeling that they're speaking for us. But what I didn't talk about was how they're doing that in this article. They're, they're using people like Tlaib Kweli so that Tlaib Kweli can come off as, oh, I understand what they're saying. But then he turns around and goes right back to, you should support the Democrats no matter what rhetoric. There's other parts in this article. Um, let me see here. Let 
let me find it. My bad, fam. One second. Be patient with me, y'all. I'm almost there. Garrett said there was not a forceful enough answer. Again, more more babble, but let me let me find it. Let me see if this. this. Oh God, this article is so much. In interviews, black Democrats said the party itself is to blame. Party leaders have failed to further understand the voters who have boosted them at the polls. So again, this is a, a lot of acknowledgement of the problems that Democrats have, but then they gloss over it and then try to put it into, oh, we don't understand. Oh, the Democrats, they just don't understand black people well enough. No, again, white supremacy understands black people what, better than black people understand themselves. So this is more babble about, oh, they don't understand, they don't, we, we just don't understand black people. And that's why, that's why the disinf that's why we're vulnerable to the disinformation campaign. And again, with the, with the rhetoric, like I pointed out in the last video about how black leaders have been at war with the party to, for inclusion. This is more, even in this article, they're using their black tokens. To make you feel like these are people who are representing you, including Talib Kweli. So that now that you trust these people, because Talib Kweli acknowledged that we shouldn't just be blindly voting for a party. Now we should listen to this person, even when he tells me to go back and go, go back to blindly voting for one party. That's what that, that point is. And that's really um, the last point that I wanted to emphasize in this article or in this part two. Um, hey, like I said, this video ended up being pretty much just as long as the part one, not quite as long, but almost just as long. Um, and my bad for that in part fan where I had to get silent searching for the parts in the article that I was looking for, but it's a long article. Um, and I just wanted to, you know, really, really get down into the meat and the grit of this article and reemphasize some points that I really felt like needed to be reemphasized. So anyway, fam, uh, like, share, subscribe. That's another video. Peace.